Patty Gasso has win number 400 in the Big 12. Kelly Maxwell, the national pitcher of the week, and T.R.A. Jennings just scorching this past week. We welcome in Alex Storacco to break it all down on today's episode of Locked on Sooners. You are Locked on Sooners, your daily podcast on the Oklahoma Sooners, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Locked On Sooners, joined by Alex Storanko as we break down everything in the world of Sooner softball. A a lot to dissect from the doubleheader sweep of Tarleton State. We've got uh, awards, which that's uh, not unfamiliar to Oklahoma softball, but uh, a couple of uh, big-time award winners in Kelly Maxwell, in T.R.A. Jennings this week for the Sooners. But let's start with Coach, where uh, it's another milestone victory her 400th big 12 victory when when you saw that or heard that what was your first reaction to coach gasso has won 400 big 12 games um honestly when i saw it i was just kind of like shocked i didn't know that was a milestone she was really um close to um so it's just really cool to be a part of it and just know that you know she's put in so much work um to get to that level um and where she is just in her career and just also just that milestone. Um, And it just goes to show like how much time she's put into it. And um, you can have success um, while also focusing on just a lot of other things. She's so in depth about everything that she does, whether that's um, the team recruiting her family. Um, And I think that's what stuck out and showed to me, like even while getting recruited by her was her family is so important to her. And so I feel like a lot of people these days struggle to kind of separate the coaching and, and the family sense of it. And when you see her have this kind of success and she's able to really kind of have all pillars involved, um, I'm really excited for her. To have sustained winning for so long and obviously to have built what she's built at, at Oklahoma is pretty amazing You've been in those battle lines, though, Uh, the Big Ten, the Big 12. You've seen the Texases. You've seen the the Baylors of the world, Oklahoma State, you name it. Can you make sense of 400 for fans that are watching and listening to this? Because Oklahoma has a habit of making this look routine and easy, but it's not to rack up 400 Big 12 wins. She's the first coach ever in any sport to win 400 Big 12 uh, games. How difficult is that uh, for Coach Gasso to have done? Yeah, I mean, insanely difficult. And to kind of put it in perspective, last year I know we were undefeated in Big 12, and I believe we were 18-0. and, and 0, And that is a lot of 18-0 and 0 seasons to even add up to 400. So for her to be um, that successful and have that kind of number and milestone within any kind of Big 12 coach, um, just goes to show how long she's been playing, um, been within the game and coaching um, here at OU. Um, so I think that just goes to show how successful one you have to be and two how long you have to be doing it in order to reach that kind of milestone. Because I know not every year is an undefeated season, so um, there's just so many levels that go into it all. And um, just to see her kind of be celebrated to a, an, on another level um, is really exciting. Alex, you've uh, spoke a lot about the just top to bottom, every detail nature of Oklahoma's program and how that wowed you when you joined it. Along the way, was there a a speech or a coaching moment from from Patty Gassa where you thought, you know, beyond the the film studies and just the the detail-oriented nature of Oklahoma where you thought to yourself, okay, well, this is why – Patty Gasso has won as much as she's won. This is why she's revered in the way that she is. Did were, were there any moments like that for you? Um, I think a big part of it. Um, I came in last year as a transfer um, with still a very well vetted team, and for me to not have a ton of questions is huge when I'm able to 
go to other players in the locker room and them have the answers for me. So it goes to so show that she runs a very kind of traditional program while also adapting to, you know, what's new in the world and society and how um, different generations of players are. So when you have, she's talked about it before in interviews where she kind of has this really player led team. And I think, yes, that speaks volumes on the culture and the players that she recruits, but also what, she's laid down as a foundation for so many years. It's really hard to upkeep that kind of culture for so long that it just keeps getting bigger and just building on top of it higher and higher. Um, so I think just reflecting on my time there, but then also knowing while I was in the locker room, like I really didn't go to Coach Gasso for a lot of questions. I was just able to find answers to um, big questions and small questions within my own locker room and to my left and right. And I think that's huge. And um, it's hard to find within um, softball these days. Um, you don't have a lot of coaches that have been coaching a long, um, as long as her um, or just coaches able to have the culture that she does for so long. And I, I can't speak on that enough because um, that, that locker room is, is so important. It's so such a big part of the foundation that you lay. Cause obviously everything that you did, you do in between the lines is important, but it's how, you handle that outside of the lines that just goes along with it. And, you know, with the spotlight that OU softball is in, um, it takes just a certain type of coach culture and locker room and players that they're recruiting um, into it. And, you know, just reflecting on also just conversations I've had in the last month, I think recruiting is a big part of it. She's very selective in who she has and brings into her locker room. And that's a huge part. And when you're recruiting not only high schoolers, but then also you're looking at girls who have gone through college and kind of know a little bit about college and how it's done. Um, and they're a little older. So you get the feel like I was like, okay, I'm 22. I'm getting recruited again. This is kind of weird. But so I knew kind of like the questions to ask and she able to, she was able to handle all of that and just be prepared whether everything went right or there was something that went wrong and you know, whatever it was, she had an answer. And I feel like that only comes with just like the poise and um, just a certain type of, you know, persona when it comes to it all, because, and I think coach Gasso handles the spotlight and all of the success in such grace. And um, that's super special. Well, since we're on the subject of coaching and, uh, you know, any head coach would tell you, you, you can't build a mountaintop without plenty of talented players and also assistant coaches. And I don't know that we've asked you a lot about Jin Rocha, what she brings to this Sooner program, obviously uh, working very closely with Coach Rocha. What is Coach Rocha like? Uh, what What did she do for you during your time at OU? I think a big thing was like her patience. She was like um, just like a mother figure for us in the bullpen. Um, and it kind of just brings a different type of coach when you get to the nitty gritty, you're playing a dirt sport. And so when you have someone that can not only correct you and help you and make you better in every way, she's able to just be there for you in a softball sense, non softball sense. She was always, um, very just into us as people, not just softball players. And I think that was always huge for me. Um, she's just, she's just so gentle and she's able to like bring kind of a different life perspective to pitching. And that's sometimes rare and you don't get that a lot. And so when coach Rocha is able to, you know, help, you know, whether that's a rookie or whether that was me being as old as I was being like, Hey, like this is a different mental game of softball. And so she was able to help me in film and note-taking and reading a hitter swing. And I thought that I did that <clears throat> pretty well up until that point. And so when I learned just different aspects and different terms, um, she handled it with that, with just like, like a mother, just tender kind of nature. And so players can be just so much more receptive when it's handled like that instead of um, just differently of like, no, this is right. And this is wrong. Like you were wrong in, before. And she's like, Oh, okay, cool. Let's build on it. Like it brings a whole different, like just talking term and nature. And um, it's hard to find, especially when you know just the roots that coach Rocha and coach Gasso have as well. Um, it's just such longevity within it all. Like they know each other, like, 
the back of each other's hand, I feel like. Um, and Coach Rocha, she knows she knows how to fire up, fire you up just how you need to. I know I've talked about how every pitcher is a little different in the way that they think and they attack and um, how they kind of go back to like their zero. Um, and she was so good at figuring that out and like handling it as well, whether that was on a mound visit, in the dugout, in the bullpen at practice. Um, she was so good at all of that in, in her own way. Well, one arm that uh, I think she got fired up this past week is Kelly Maxwell, who, oh, by the way, was the NFCA National Pitcher of the Week. Let's talk a little bit uh, from the expert, Alex Storaco, about what she's seen from Kelly Maxwell of late. We'll do that next on Locked On Sooners. Worried about your bracket getting busted? Are you tired of the same old daily fantasy grind where you make a roster, cross your fingers, and hope for the best? Or are you losing on that last leg of your pick em entry? Well, introducing Better Together. It's the first cooperative daily fantasy platform where teamwork, it trumps talent, and you can play with your friends, not against them. Pick more or less on real-time player strats, strategize with your partner to boost your odds, and climb the leaderboard together. So grab a friend and join the social DFS movement. Download Better Together now from the App Store and sign up using promo code Locked On for a chance to win your share of over $1,000 in cash prizes. Remember the code Locked On because winning alone is fun, but it's better together. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. Kelly Maxwell, what can you say outside of two magical marvelous starts the first one really uh you know save for an error was a perfect game it, it wound up being her fifth career no hitter and then oh no big deal versus texas tech 10 strikeouts uh six scoreless innings what did you make of kelly maxwell's week you know i think she's really just spinning the ball really well and when you have that kind of confidence in, in yourself and your pitch um i think that's huge she also is able to just like a little bit kind of relax with just where she's placing the ball instead of just being so forced and pinpoint in your location. And, and I kind of just see that she's able to just like really build off of not only taking it, um, taking it into her own hands on the mound and, you know, having the strikeout amount, but then also those other outs within a game. She is just, you know, letting her pitches fly and letting the defense help her out. And, you know, I love seeing that out of her, especially um, me coming from a same, a similar position as she was a year ago. Um, and seeing her kind of just blossom in that um, has been really fun. Um, and so, I mean, the strikeout count, just the poise that she has. I'm so jealous that she just doesn't have any kind of emotion because I'm such an emotional pitcher in person. Um, but she's just so fun to, to watch on the mound. I think she has a different kind of art to it, um, especially as a lefty. Um, she brings just something different that not a lot of staffs have, and um, I love that out of her. Because you, you both <laughs> did take similar paths in a way to Oklahoma, when did you feel that you were totally comfortable being at OU? I mean, you're an experienced pitcher. You've accomplished a lot uh, when you come uh, from Michigan to Oklahoma. But when did you – was there a point in the season that you felt, okay, well, I, I'm I'm a Sooner and I'm very comfortable. Was it quick? Was it late? When did you feel comfortable at OU? Um, I would say just like in the sense of 
relying on my defense a little bit more. It definitely took some time of me like trying not to muscle through pitches. And even, even to this day, um, I still have points where I'm, I get very pinpoint and very just exact. And um, when you're able to rely on your defense, you're able to be okay with your mistakes. Um, and no matter if um, there's strikeouts or not, like you make mistakes and sometimes an oopsie pitch is a strikeout pitch and you just kind of have to laugh it off. Um, so it definitely took me some time and that went through, you know, practice obviously and, and, in season a little bit. I don't really have like a pinpoint time of just like, Oh, I feel good. It was just, I feel like the defense always just surprised me um, throughout the season because of just like the nature and the commonality of their, their plays and, you know, what they did. Um, I was, I think what amazed me the most was just, you know, the double plays up the middle, like, and having a third baseman, you know, like Alyssa Brito next to me, I was like, okay, I don't have to take care of much. So um, it was just, I don't think I ever really got used to it. I just got, you know, acceptable of it as it, as the season went on. And so I kind of feel that out of Kelly and, and just like, she's just so relaxed. It looks like out here now. And obviously in conference play, it's a little bit you know, more of a familiar ground for her since being in the Big 12 previously. Um, so you kind of see that in her on the mound and just um, just the way that she, you know, interacts with the team. And it's it's really cool to see, um, especially, like I said, um, from someone that was in similar shoes as her. Well, and that's, that's why I wanted to get your perspective on it, because you, you lived that. Uh, you know, even – not just the defensive alignments and what my defense is doing behind me and how my stuff feels on a, on a given day or at a point in the season, the, the comfort with the, the clubhouse was that pretty seamless for you? What is Kelly kind of, what has she been dealing with in that regard? And did it help you being an older player, sort of trusting uh, what I'm going to bring to the table to Oklahoma? What was sort of that process like, and did it take a little bit to get comfortable with new faces and a new team? Um, I would say yes and no. Um, for me, um, it was just kind of getting used to just different environment, uh, being a little further from home, and um, just kind of putting all of my trust in them. And then when I once I did that, like it was kind of pretty seamless. I feel like even off the field, like there was just so many situations where it was like, oh my gosh, it feels like I've been playing here for years, not, you know, a couple months at this point. So it was cool to just develop relationships on and off the field and in a lot of different ways, whether that was just bonding over. Um, I know we had like competitive volleyball tournaments in like the backyards of each other's houses and stuff. And um, we were big and playing cards. So we did that a ton. And you know, like I said, everything that we do is super competitive. And so it was just fun, like being competitive and in, in other natures, not just softball. And don't get me wrong. When we were scrimmaging, gearing up for season, it was like, okay, we're on different teams. And we played like we are different. We were on different teams. Like we did not take each other lightly at all. And there was just days where I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to like eat out tonight. I'm not going to eat at home and see everyone. And, and I think just like being able to stay competitive and in a friendly way and, and know that in the end, I know that there's so much relief that, everyone in that locker room is on your team. You don't have to face them for the rest of the season. I know I felt that. Um, and so I think just like that relief as well of knowing like I have to face the best hitters day in and day out at practice. And so everyone that comes after that is just a whole new ball game. Yes, I'm doing research, but I don't have to face the TRAs, the Sydney Sanders, the, the, um, you know, Kinsey Hansen's day by day by day. Um, in it in one through nine in the lineup. Um, I think that's a huge difference maker in, in, in that transition. What kind of cards do you guys play? Are we talking uh, we or, big, Uno or what? Oh no, we were big Uno. We called it spicy Uno and there was just added some rules in there and stuff. And I, I've heard spicy, Uno is kind of a little bit known in the softball world, but I didn't know until OU and that's like, that's, you know, the saving grace of our cards, card games and everything. Well, every once in a while, you got a little time to kill. So that's just, <laughs> just the way that it goes. Uh, what do you make of the rest of the pitching from the week that was? We've talked about Kelly Maxwell, but uh, overall, you look at it and what? You win uh, the first game of the doubleheader. Kelly was great there, 8 to nothing, 12 to 1, game 2. And then you surrender as a staff three runs all weekend versus Texas Tech. You look at it and say collectively it had to be pretty good, but 
what, what did you what impressed you? What did you make of sort of the rest of the week for Oklahoma's pitching? Yeah, I see, you know, just improvements in a lot of ways. Um, I saw Carly Keeney. I feel like she really stepped up in her appearances. Um, she had zeros across the board and a couple strikeouts, which is awesome to see kind of her like rebound from the last couple of weeks. Um, Kirsten Deal, maybe some people might be worried, but let's also note again, these are her first runs she gave up since the first weekend of softball. So I just see her just kind of growing in her role. Um and just kind of being flexible with, you know, her catchers, the, the, you know, teams that she's playing as a pitcher. I know I was watching the games and it looked freezing on TV. So I can only imagine, and I know I'm supposed to be cold, like used to the cold being from up North, but um, it does, you know, is the worst. If you're a certain type of pitcher throwing in the, in the cold is never truly fun. Um, so I think, you know, maybe that had a little bit to do with it. Um, Peyton came in in relief and, had a really good inning. Um, Nicole May, I feel like she is, you know, in a way of figuring out her own sense of being that kind of top dog within the staff. Um, she gave up seven hits, which is a little unlikely of her. Um, but I feel like in six innings, that's not a terrible kind of stat line, truthfully. And I feel like she's just continuing to grow. I feel like this season she's throwing a lot harder in my mind when I've gone and watched her pitch compared to um, – when I was pitching next to her last year. And so with that, you know, sometimes throwing harder, it takes a little bit more of movement and spin off the ball. Um, so maybe that could be a little bit of it. She has um, in that aspect, but I think as a whole, they're doing amazing. I mean, for, for them in a, in a three game series, only giving up three runs. Um, I think any other program would wish and pray for that. So um, I'm excited just to see, how they still morph into that role. There really is, isn't a set lineup from Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So I'm excited to see kind of like how that really morphs out. I know um, coach kind of switched out deal and Nicole being starters on Saturday and Sunday. So um, yeah, excited to see how it all plays out. How good is TRA Jennings? Uh, breaking news. Uh, she She's magical like always. And it was that kind of week for her. She earns a big 12 player of the week honors. Let's get Alex's take on TRA's week next right here on Locked On Sooners. This week's March Madness Bracket highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest, just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs. These guys were able to take it to the next level, such as the number one overall seed, the Yukon Huskies, they can only be described as an armada. The top-seeded team is as hardcore as it gets out there, so it's no wonder why they've landed the top overall seed in the 2024 NCAA tournament. And they're the favorite to go win it all and cut down those nets despite four of the six Power Six Conference champions standing in their way in that East region. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or the Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Again, this is uh, not breaking news, but T.R.A. Jennings is, she's incredible. And again, she joined Kelly Maxwell with uh, their eighth career respective Big 12 weekly honors. T.R.A. Jennings, if uh, you missed the numbers, led the Big 12 and runs batted in, extra base, uh, extra base hits last week, seven for 13 at the plate, a trio of doubles, three home runs, and uh, 12 runs batted in. So <laughs> T.R.A. Jennings, how special was that last week? I mean, it's just so cool to see her. And I feel like every week I'm amazed by her numbers. I feel like she does it so subtly. Like she's not too explosive or and down one week. Like she's so consistent that it, it almost shocks me because I'm like, oh, I, I guess I didn't realize that she had 12 RBIs this weekend. And so when you really go through and like look at the numbers, you're like, wow, it's just it, it kind of just pops out of the page with you. So no shocker there. Um, in her awards for the week and um, just to see her just like I feel like even in the beginning of the season I was like oh she's kind of looks like she's pressing and stuff but she has always kind of had the numbers and it's just like I said so subtle that it it shocks me and 
And I just love seeing her success. She handles it all so graciously and she's so humble in, in her regards. And so um, it's just fun to see her. It, she's just so fun to attack. Even in the box, I'm like, I don't know what to throw to you. So I'm just going to, you know, throw my best and see what happens. And most of the time it's, you know, not fun for myself, but um, Tiara is just so fun to watch play and then just be teammates with. And I was always just so happy that she was on my team. And um, it's just so cool to see just the ball explode off of, you know, her bat and, She's not chasing records, I know, and everything, but I know that she's close to so many. I know she tied up uh, the doubles with uh, Cindy Romero this week as well. So for her to just have her name on a top on top of a lot of those categories is so cool because she's played with a lot of alongside a lot of generational talent at OU, and now I feel like this year is really her year to really keep making a name for herself, but like also be known alongside a lot of those greats that have come through Oklahoma softball. So obviously she's about to have, yes, the, the doubles mark at, at Oklahoma. When you think about that, what does it mean to you? I mean, that's a lot of two baggers. What, what does it say about TRA? I mean, it just goes to show how explosive her bat is. Um, I feel like she's slightly fast. You never really like see it. Um, but it's always fun to just see her kind of get there and show that little burst of like explosion of emotion. I feel like she's another one that kind of has her poise for a lot of the games. And so I feel like she really gets excited for that kind of stuff. And um, so I think that's just cool too. You've been around a number of, uh, well, professional players and a bunch of talented Sooners in the, you know, in your time here. And before that, obviously a bunch of talent at Michigan, when you watch Tiara just go about her business as a hitter, you said watching that ball explode off the bat, the way she swings it, what stands out about the way Tiara swings the bat? I mean, as a, from a pitcher's perspective, it has to be, you know, there's certain hitters that are intimidating, right? But you, you, I'm sure, fashion yourself as sort of an intimidating arm, but just watching Tiara, what, what stands out about Tiara the hitter? Yeah, I feel like she never truly takes a pitch off and you're never very rarely going to get like a check swing out of her. And, you know, if she sees a pitch, she's swinging all the way and, you know, just letting the ball fly. Um, and I like that giving that 110 percent each swing within an at bat, even three, four, five times in a game. It's so rare when you really think about it. You know, sometimes you see, you know, the great hitters kind of fall into a funk um, and everything. And I feel like with her, no matter what, you're going to get a full 110% swing. Um, and so I think that's also what makes her so great um, in a way. I feel like she never really gets down on herself when it comes to, you know, maybe quote unquote slump for Tiara Jennings. But um it's just so cool to see just that kind of hitter just attack in every way, shape or form. She's never, you know, doubting. She's always sure of herself. And even if you're like, why would you swing at that? She's swinging at it. And if she chose to say yes, she's giving it 110%. So I feel like as a pitcher that can be intimidating even, and just knowing that, you know, Ooh, she just missed that. But she was, if she connected, that was going places. And so I feel like that's another aspect of Tiare Jennings in the box as a hitter. Well, it, it wasn't just Kelly Maxwell and T.R.A. Jennings. And if we're talking offense, look, uh, Oklahoma in the first game of the doubleheader, blanks Tarleton State, run rule variety, eight to nothing. Then they put 12 on the board. And it was that kind of offensive weekend in Lubbock, 14 runs, 15 runs, 11 runs. I mean, th this is, again, it's not just some guarantee you show up and go play double figure runs. It's tough to do. But this is the kind of offense that I think some Sooner fans were sort of waiting to see that type of explosion. The, the offensive weekend as a whole, how great was that to see and what impressed you from it? Yeah, I just think like the consistency of it. Um, I mean, for them to go and score 12 runs before an out is recorded is mind blowing. And it's got to be some sort of record because I was like watching and I was like, there's no way like this is insane because obviously like, yes, you can score maybe 12 in an inning, whether that's on errors or um, you have an out or two in there, but for them to score 12 before even an out is like, it kind of just still kind of 
leaves me speechless because I I'm like, okay, what happened here? What's going on? And it's just like every hole on the field they found and, and, you know, they put it all together. And, and when you really look at it too, the numbers, I mean, you have 12 out of the 14 hitters with a home run. So you really can't take any, any batter off, whether that's a pinch hitter or not, like there's explosion in the lineup. They're going to get it done. I mean, it's, you know, a double after double after double. And, you know, I feel like those are sometimes my favorite when it's just trading places from home to second. And like, I love that like kind of consistency and and you really saw it. And another big thing too, I feel like on the weekend um, was walks. Uh, Walks are are huge. And I feel like Oklahoma is one of the few programs that really take pride and excitement in every walk because it's a free base. It's a free 60 feet. Um, and coach Gasso absolutely preaches that, um, you know, take advantage of every, you know, walk given and, and free chance possible. And so when you have, you know, hitters on the weekend, I mean, Sid and Riley love them had six and eight walks on the weekend. That is just wild numbers. And it's, it's a stat. I feel like that's really not looked at a whole ton. Um, but in the grand scheme of things, those walks are co- turning into runs when you have the explosiveness of a one through four. 14 lineup that they have and the ability that they can to kind of mix up the lineup and put whoever out there that they want. Um, So I think that was huge this weekend. We always, uh, before we take one final look at the, the week in front of Oklahoma, we always like to pick your brain on just the world of softball, anything uh, non Oklahoma related that caught your eye from the past week. Um, One big one, considering it's a little relevant to OU softball is Baylor getting swept by Kansas. Um, that was a huge one uh, this weekend, and obviously this upcoming week, OU plays Baylor at home and at Hall of Fame, so that's a big one for the week um, that I was really looking into. I had my eyes on LSU this weekend uh, because of their reign of undefeated, but that is no more because Ole Miss took the series from LSU, not just one upset, but two, um, so I think that was also huge. Um, in just the softball sense, because you saw Ole Miss pitching just kind of dominate the LSU hitting that's really been kind of putting things together. So, um, yeah, that was two big things that I really kind of noted for the week. Well, then in closing, as you've segued us beautifully, a, a true professional already, Alex <laughs> Rocco. What what do you make of Baylor's start to the season? This is not expected. The, the Kansas result was surprising, and – Probably uh, some would have said, hey, it wouldn't have shocked us that much if Baylor took the series versus Oklahoma State, but they did not. So what are the what are the Sooners going to see this weekend from Baylor? What are you expecting from the Bears? Yeah, I feel like, like you said, it was for sure uh, shocking and surprising. I feel like Baylor kind of was picked in a lot of people's brains to be a, a top runner in the Big 12. And when they start out um, in conference one and five and their, their two series were – um, Oklahoma State and Kansas, everyone's kind of like, wait, hold on, pause, let's really dive into it. So I did. I did a little dive. And when you look at their their resume for the year, I mean, they beat UCLA, Mizzou, Oregon, Lafayette twice. So obviously some key wins. They played Tennessee really hard to open up the, up the year. Um, and so it's really interesting. I feel like this year – they have maybe a little bit more complete of a pitching staff. They have three key pitchers in, in, in Riley Crandall, Aaliyah Benford, and Casey West. And one that's not sticking out to anyone is Dariana Orm, who was their ace last year and have a ton of innings. She had a, a lot of great stats last year, was the winning pitcher when Baylor beat um, OU. Um, she has eight innings on the year. And so me, I'm like, okay, like what's the numbers? Is she hurt? I'm not really sure what the story is there. But then also when you have a complete pitching staff, you get a little bit more confused because it's like, okay, what is missing? And I really think just their offense isn't firing like it really was last year in some senses. And so you have one of their players, Shailen Govan, um, hitting over 400, um, but not really big explosive numbers that you see in a three, four hole hitter like she is. The big one that really stuck to me, she has She's hitting 43, nine RBIs, only two home runs, but 21 walks. And that is just beating anyone in their lineup by double at least. Um, But then it kind of is a big drop off within numbers and just averages after her. So when you don't have a complete 
or even half kind of a hitting lineup that's consistent um, and producing, it, it does lead to, you know, that one in five start that um, they're showing within, you know, conference thus far. So I'm curious as to if they kind of, kind of roll over and defeat um, or kind of get fired up for this series against, you know, OU. Obviously, they're Friday night. We're playing at Hall of Fame, and that's super exciting. It brings the energy. I'm excited, and I hope fans are too because um, I remember just that Friday series against Texas was huge last year and so much fun. So, um, you know, I hope that energy is also there this weekend. Um, I'm really curious to see just like how it all kind of – blends out and see what kind of is produced for the weekend. So um, I'm excited for this series against Baylor to see if there is some life out of them or, um, you know, or not. Well, and it's Oklahoma. So Oklahoma could go put uh, an impressive sweep together of Baylor, but don't get fooled by the one and five thing with the, the bears either. They're fully capable of making this maybe more interesting than, than some would think uh, going in. Alex, uh, appreciate your time as always have a, a great rest of the week and we'll see you at hall of fame stadium, everybody until then uh, boomer sooner, everyone.